Peace, guys. What's up? Welcome back to, new, to another video, actually. I think I'm uh, getting myself energetically synced with just getting all crazy with my uploading uh, because there's just so much to talk about. You know, there's so much to talk about. A, a wider, you know, a, a full scope of things to talk about, you know, or at least that's in my mental field. Uh, but in this video, uh, I want to share a recent, like, like about, a, I think it's about one and a half weeks ago, about 10 days or so ago. I want to share a uh, terrifying, horrific, um, false awakening, lucid dream I had, which really, like, it, when, when it happened, you know, it, it affected, like, the rest of my day energetically. It was crazy. It was really intense. Um, uh, usually I don't, I don't have like nightmarish or horror movie like, you know, false awakening dreams. So this one just really stood out to me. So I just want to share that in this video before I get into that, um, into, into talking about it. Uh, there's somebody in the, in the comments, uh, I think it was about a week or two ago, something about, um, uh, is the, the labradorite still, um, creating fluctuations or uh, helping with lucid dreaming state or conscious awareness while in dreams. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think in a video a year or two ago, I talked about my labradorite uh, raw, raw chunk of labradorite. It's a special to me. Um, I sleep with it sometimes, not all the time, but I do. But yeah, no, in answer to your uh, comment, um, yes, the labradorite for whatever reason, uh, definitely still creates um, heightened levels of conscious awareness uh, while in dream state. Uh, for me, all right, I'm just saying that's what I'm not saying it works for everybody. I'm just saying that's my opinion, right? Uh, but, you know, I'm not special. And if there's something going on, I, I think it also depends on the on the chunk you have or the piece you have. I've had some really interesting lucid dreaming experience with like polished pieces of labradorite, uh, but this raw chunk, uh, it far exceeds any of the polished pieces that I've slept with. <laughs> that sounds hilarious. But anyways, in this video, I want to share a, uh, just a crazy, just t uh, scary, uh, false awakening lucid dream I had just about 10 days ago, a week and a half ago or so. And, um, and I was, uh, so I was just, you know, just sleeping. Right. Um, and, uh, my best guess is it was maybe about 6am or so in around that time frame. <clears throat> and, uh, with false awakening dreams, the reason why they're called false awakening is because you, uh, you're in a dream where you actually wake up and you think that you've actually woken up in your regular human experience. You get duped, you get, you get tricked. Um, and sometimes you're completely very lucid in those experiences and sometimes it's more observational, just a kind of a regular dream kind of experience. But for me, uh, this one was more of a lucid, um, fully consciously aware, uh, false awakening dream around 6 a.m. And so I get out of bed, right? And, um, and I, I walk out, I walk from the bed and I'm just walking to the bathroom, right? Uh, there is a, there's two doors. Uh, the door to the right is the bathroom and the door to the left is the walk-in closet area. Okay. So if you kind of visualize that, so it's all, it, it seems as real as anything, right? False awakening dreams can be these, these amazing virtual realities, um, slash simulations, slash sub subconscious mind simulation slash dreams slash a lot of the stuff right and when you're in those moments uh you know they, they they're as real as anything right and that's why they're called false awakening dreams because they're so real and they mimic this reality so much that you literally think that you've just woken up actually woken up and that you're in an awakened state in the human body and so in this uh, false awakening dream, this is where it gets a little scary, okay? Um, I, 
I'm walking to the bathroom to the door to the right, right? Uh, but for whatever reason, I get sidetracked and I walk into the walk-in closet door, okay? And then I'm like, wait, I have to go to the bathroom. What am I doing? Um, so I turn around and then as I go towards the other door to the bathroom in this false awakening nightmare, uh, all of a sudden I just see about a six foot tall uh, female, long uh, black hair. The, the hair is kind of covering the face a little bit, very pale skin looking, but it looks like a mannequin. Okay. Totally lifeless. Uh, just like a mannequin in the mall, like literally. Okay. And then in that moment, you know, I'm consciously aware I'm lucid. Right. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember a mannequin a six foot tall, long black hair, female mannequin sitting in this room. What in the world is going on here? Right. <clears throat> and that's kind of where I, the lucidity of that false awakening dream that made me realize that I was possibly in a uh, false awakening dream. Right. Cause uh, there was something out of place. Right. Didn't make any sense. <clears throat> I gotta drink some water. Hold on. So, so, so in that moment, my, my uh, sheer curiosities um, then make me take my hand and I put the hand on the forehead of this mannequin, right? Because A, I was like, wait a minute, why is there a mannequin in here? Uh, and I wanted to just feel the texture of it because I was thinking it was a mannequin. So I wanted to feel that plastic-like kind of texture on it, right? So as soon as I put my hand, it was my right hand in that false awakening dream, lucid dream, and I took my right dream hand and I put it on the on the forehead of the mannequin. And then it just out of nowhere it just jumped to life. It became alive, fully animated. And I was like, whoa. And then I knew I was totally in a, you know, uh, lucid false awakening dream situation. You know, it was all apparent at that time. Uh, but uh, but what happened, what, what, what was really frightening and really kind of like a horror movie was that uh, it came to life and I was putting my hand on the forehead and then I kind of pushed my hand away as I got startled, you know, by this mannequin becoming alive all of a sudden. But then it opened its mouth and it had these like demonic razor sharp, you know, uh, teeth and stuff and and my hand was just kind of there, you know, and it clamped down on my hand, like really hard, you know, and it was just like biting and biting on my hand and it just wouldn't let go. Right. Um, and, uh, at that time, uh, that's one, you know, like consciously in a way I was like trying to just get the hell out of there. You know, I'm just like, I gotta wake up. I gotta get out of this false awakening nightmare you know this is crazy right um i don't have you know like these nightmarish kind of stuff happen too often but but i'm still sharing it though because i thought it was interesting and and then um so um i'm in bed right my physical body is in bed i'm there with my girlfriend um she's next to me and uh, she, I think she either was already awake or she woke up from me trying to scream out while my physical body was in sleep paralysis state, you know, cause you're, you know, your body's in that sleep paralysis state while you're dreaming and lucid dreaming or regular dreaming, or, you know, uh, if you're out of your body or any of that kind of stuff, um, you, your physical form is just in sleep paralysis mode. And so uh, I remember trying to yell and scream while that demonic, you know, pale skin, long black haired, you know, uh, I mean, it literally, it was like a mannequin that turned into a demon. Like, I am not kidding. But it was definitely, in my honest opinion, it was definitely a false awakening dream. It wasn't an out-of-body experience. At least that's the way I see it, the way it happened. Because when I have out-of-body experiences and I'm leaving the physical body area, um, what, what distinguishes that is, uh, to me, is the, the breath. So I'm hearing my physical body going through its breathing motions, its 
is its breath. Uh, it's a natural sleep breath while it's in sleep paralysis or just sleeping or whatever. So uh, the reason why I call it a false awakening, you know, horror, horror show um, is because it all happened, but I did not uh, hear my physical body uh, going through its rhythmic breathing process uh, during sleep paralysis. Uh, and that's kind of some, one of the little like clues or the things I look for uh, to distinguish between um, out of body or lucid dream or a false awakening dream, in this case, false awakening horror movie. <laughs> but, um, but anyways, yeah, that, that's key though. At least that's my own experience with it. You know, um, I, I don't hear a lot of other people describe it the way I do. I uh, don't know, don't know why. Maybe it, things are kind of a little different for each person. I, I really don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, so let me just end the video here because I've been uploading a couple videos. I don't want to make this too long. Uh, but, uh, but basically, as I was screaming out, right, as that demonic thing was clamping down on my hand like that, you know, um, I was screaming out. And then my, uh, I remember as I was, as my girlfriend kind of noticed something was going on, and she took her took her hand and she touched my hand. I could then feel her energy, feel her hand in that moment, and then it kind of just then I was just kind of thrown into that sleep paralysis state where I was just in sleep paralysis, but consciously aware, you know, that I was in sleep paralysis, and I kind of feel her hand touching me, and then after about thirty seconds or so, you know everything came back to normal but anyways i just wanted to share that with you guys i thought that was a really crazy weird uh interesting uh false awakening peace